All right, and welcome back to True Footy Podcast 36. Very quick turnaround today. We just released a podcast yesterday reviewing the season of the 10 teams who missed the finals yesterday. We actually did it a few days ago. The losers. Yeah, the losers, exactly right. Um, <laughs> of which Fremantle was one Yeah, I was going to say, I can say that because my team was in the list. Yeah, true, fair enough. Um, so, yes, of course, we uploaded the video yesterday and... Um, of course, yesterday we were also rocked by the tragic news of Danny Frawley's passing, passed away in a tragic car accident. Um, so obviously, because we recorded the podcast a few days before, we didn't get the chance to acknowledge Danny. But um, I think we'd just like to say here at True Footy, we're all very saddened about what happened, obviously. Um, it's clear. I mean, he was still part of the, the, uh, the was, AFL media. He was strong. I really enjoyed it. He added dynamic, fun element to stuff. He Took the mickey out of himself, it was great. Yeah, exactly. And watching shows like uh, 360 and on the couch and stuff, it's quite obvious the impact of his passing has had on uh, quite a few people in the AFL media still. So, yeah, very sad and obviously our thoughts are with the family. Absolutely. Um, as you can see, we're also enjoying a beer today on the True Footy Podcast. So um, we'll do a cheeky on little a toast Tuesday to uh, Danny Frawley. Um, and you also might have noticed that Bush is using... The mic stand, as for you can its see, intended purpose. If you can see on YouTube, uh, for those watching rather than listening, um, yeah, the <laughs> things we use as mic stands are actually stubby holders. So um, there we go, dual purpose, dual wield. But um, well, speaking of dual wield, we got dual camera back again today, which yep. is real nice. So hopefully we're out of the woods again with technical issues. But I do say that every three or so weeks on this channel. So Knock on wood. That's it. Um, obviously today, Bush, we're going to do a short podcast on the finals week two. Yep. Maybe we can have a quick look at the first week of the finals too. Did you know that it was the first time since 1926 that the first the first, first and, second and second teams have lost in week one? I didn't think it would have been that big of a gap, but... Yeah, I didn't think it was that rare of a occurrence. Yeah, me neither, but... Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I think that kind of speaks to the, the strength of the top four this year. Yeah. The fact that a team like West Coast finished fifth and were, yeah, fair enough to be fifth shows how strong the top four, four were, in my opinion, this year and how even, obviously, it was. I think one game separated first from fifth. So Especially for the two away teams to win, even though Collingwood yeah. was at home. <laughs> let's, let's just call it how it is. It was pretty much a home game for Collingwood. True. And, obviously, Richmond winning, um, they, they, were, they were kind of rocked by injury in the first half of the year, so they were unlucky not to finish higher, in my yeah. opinion. So, or Brisbane were unlucky to to come up against them in the first week of the finals. But we're just going to have a quick look at the first week of the games, um, starting chronologically with West Coast and Essendon. What were your musings from this game, Busher? What were your takeaways from West Coast and Essendon generally? Nick Nat is West Coast's biggest barometer, I'd say. When Nick Nat's up and about, West Coast are up and about. He's just a real barometer. He just gives you that extra element in your midfield, gives you first use. The guys know how to work with Nick Nat. Mm. He's just a difference maker for West Coast, I feel. He was unbelievable. I think if you look at the stats, the difference between West Coast with Nick and Nat out of the team and in, the scores from stoppages and, and related stats are all like through the roof. He was unbelievable, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, in a I had thing, him best on ground, I believe. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah, we've got a True Footy Player of the Finals award going, um, which we're still collating the votes for. Um, but yeah, you you rated him BOG. I had Shuey BOG, who I'll touch on in a second. But it made me think Nat Nui, like... The Eagles have missed out on some gem, some gem football. Is that a phrase? Great yeah. football over the last three years, and it just made me think, shit. If he'd been fit over the last couple, um, if he'd been healthy <laughs> consistently if? throughout his career, he'd be in that Grundy Gorn conversation for sure. I feel. Yeah, I mean, yeah, quite. If he'd been able to but. have that sort of consistency, build up that form, and mm. grow with the rules and adapt. That's right. If he'd had the opportunity to do all that. Without yeah. dealing with these health issues, I think he could be in that conversation. True. I mean, he's never really, he never had that consistency before he got injured. But what, what's crazy is how. Health would have given him the chance to build and create that consistency, though, I think. What's crazy is how he hasn't really needed that much preparation. To, and he's, mm. in the three games he's impact, or played this year, he's been, or four games, he's played really well as well, which is crazy. But um, another play that I just touched on was Shuey. Um, Proving himself to be an absolute big game player. I gave him BOG. I saw an interesting stat on the couch this morning. The differential between players in normal games and finals and the players that really stood up. And Shuey, Shuey in terms of AFL player ratings, went up like 40% on his usual performance in, uh, in finals. 
And another one for Jack was Jack Redden, who went up 82% in player ratings value in finals. Redden did have a big finals campaign last year if it goes under the radar, True. I think. But that's, that's stark. That's almost double the performance huh. from one player. But, um, yeah, I just thought, I thought the Eagles came out sort of a bit angry about the losing way they finished the – yeah, losing to Hawthorne. They, they shot themselves in the foot. Many say they ruined the chance to win the premiership the year, this year. It's still unclear, but yeah, it still could could quite be true. Um, More likely for not. Yeah, put it that way. That's right. And another eagle I'll just touch on before we have a look at Essendon is Lewis Jeddah, hmm. who I think has flown under the radar up into this point, and now he's starting to get a lot of recognition in the media. It's because he's he's always been a guy that people have gone. Lewis Jeddah is a good footballer, but when he first came over to West Coast, it Took him a few years to really assimilate and find his place and thrive like he has been now. Very true. Now that he's thriving again, everyone's, all the media pundits are probably just happy that he's back up and about and they can appreciate him again, I guess. Yeah. I, I would go as far as to say he's one of our most important players, uh, probably in the second half of the year is when Dad and I started noticing it. Just his, I, I saw in another podcast, The Ruck Rover, great show, go check it out. Um, they kind of compared him to like being a back half Whitfield in the way mm. he just like, Carves teams up with his running and um, and precision ball use. So I think he is a player that opposition teams really need to quell. Um, but as for Wish, uh, as for Essendon and Wusher, Bush just quickly on them, they've been eliminated now. Will they be happy with the season as a whole? They will, they're never happy if you go out first week finals, but at the same time, you're happier to be in the finals yeah. and not in the finals. Mm. And they were probably in that borderline group that could have gone either way in terms of making finals. True. So they probably would have been happy for the experience, even though it didn't necessarily go as mm. deep into September as they might have liked. That's true. They've got, got a bit of finals experience with some young guys. Andrew McGrath played a really great game in probably his second final off the top of my head. Yeah, but, he yeah. stood up, that's for sure. That's right. Um, so obviously they've backed in Wusher after a little bit of conjecture that Wusher might get the sack despite, uh, regardless of the result against right. West Coast. So they've backed him in, which is really good. Um just quickly, what do you think is a pass mark for Wusher next year? Do you, think they, do you think they need to improve? They probably at least need to make final uh, equal this year, but probably look better doing it sort of thing, like similar mm. sort of results, but... Less inconsistency, less I guess. Less inconsistent. The gap yeah. between their best and worst was huge this year, as it yeah. was last year as well, and it's been yeah. an ongoing problem, but it was massive this year as well. Yeah, I think I think you're right, but I think it's, it's a contract year for Wush next year, so... Yeah, it's finals or bust for them. Well, for, in his case, it's finals or bust. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now, for the game, we did the live stream on Collingwood played Geelong on Friday night. Clashgate. <laughs> yeah, Clashgate <laughs> would be um, another description of it. Uh, yeah, as I said, we did the live stream. We were a bit cooked trying to trying to watch the game and talk to everyone. But, Get the um, internet working as well. Yeah, yeah. We had our battles in that game. But um, one player I know that we talked about a lot on the night was Taylor Adams, who's been another big game player. I think he petered out towards the end, didn't he? But he, yeah, he slowed he had, down. I think he had like two goals and 21 possessions in early in the second half. Uh, um, yeah, he was my BOG for a solid stint of the game and then dropped off. Yeah. What did you think about the Cats' non-selection of a true Ruckman in Stanley coming up against Grundy? It's a big call considering it's Brody Grundy, but at the same time, I don't necessarily mind it. Blitzarves is a sort of guy that can match his sort of mobility and those other attributes that Grundy brings that most Ruckman don't necessarily bring. Blitzarves is a guy that can also bring that mobility, that ball use, that that sort of thing. Very true. And still have a lot of size. He's 200 centimetres, 6'7". Blitzarves, yeah. he's a big boy. True. I guess the counter-argument to that would be that you lose an all-Australian almost quality backman out of your back six by moving back Blitzarves up forward. Uh, sorry, yeah. into the Ruck. Um, so... To an extent, their defence has been unsettled. Um, but speaking of defence, Collingwood have been brilliant this year. I, uh, I took a photo of it. My phone's over there, so I can't go get it. But I think in the last five games, they haven't conceded any more than 65 points any, right. any, in any of their games, Collingwood. Um, and I think a lower 48. So that's a real good um, sign for a Fremantle fan who's looking at... Justin Longmuir. Justin Long I was Longmuir. thinking the yeah. same thing. <laughs> Justin Longmuir obviously oversees the Collingwood back line. So... Um, they're looking real good. The Cats were really jittery, I thought. You know, there was a lot of mistakes that cost them the game against the Pies. I did tip Collingwood, and obviously the Pi, sorry, the Geelong fought back, but I think if they hadn't blown so many opportunities when the momentum was going against them, they, uh, they probably let one go a little bit. And um, on the Collingwood side of things, we also saw them 
injury struck yet again. Levi Greenwood out with an ACL. Yep. And Dugowie with the hammy. Did you see dugowie has been flown to Munich as a um, desperate attempt to get him right? Really? Yeah, yeah. So that he's um, he's visiting Bayern Munich's physio, I believe. They're flying him. Far yeah, out. yeah. That's, fl- that's wild. Flew with the club sponsor Emirates to um, to Munich, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do. To it. it was his hammy, wasn't it? Yeah, um, uh, I think hammy. So he's got. I think he's been ruled out of a prelim. So they've got like 21 days or something like that, to uh, or less than that now to try and get him right. And it's going to be down to the day, they reckon. So if they can shave off a couple of days by going through these elite rehab processes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think to go, he's like... Wouldn't flying him there and back take more out of him than it gives him? Yeah, I mean, I, I presume they've looked into that. Um, It'd be fine you, business. You could argue that because that would be fine business for yeah. sure. And uh, and it's a long flight. I yeah. mean, you got to fly to Dubai first and then another six or seven probably yeah. to Germany off the top of my head. So yeah, Especially for Melbourne. I was going to say he couldn't do the direct to London, then a shorty. Yeah, that's right. Um, but yeah, anyway, I, I was just to finish on Collingwood, I would say that He's a big player they need to get back in because it's like it's hard to see them potentially being Richmond in the grand final with Dugowie not in the side. He just adds so much. He is handy. He's such a big game player, as we saw in last year's grand final. Yeah, they'll miss him. What do you think about the Giants and the Bulldogs on Saturday? Giants came out firing. I didn't I thought that'd be a close, competitive, gritty contest. I didn't see them getting demol- Bulldogs getting demolished by Giants like that. That's true. I uh, I agree. I think Oh, you did tip the Giants to to your credit. Yeah. I tipped the Bulldogs. I didn't think it'd go down like that. Yeah, exactly. It was a uh, it was a big statement from the Giants. You know, they're the only side to win a final every year since 2016. Huh? So they're a battle hardened side. Um, obviously, used to going out semi early in final series. Yeah. So I, I, I presume they came out. I think, as I said before in a previous podcast, I think they've let this year go a little bit. I think they're a better team than sixth, mm. especially with their list talent. I know they've had the injuries, but. Um, to some extent, I think they have let the season slip a little bit. But I did, I, I did just say the top five was strong. So I say I don't know. I, I was going to say yeah. Ask for my thoughts for like each team. I'm going to kind of bring my Brisbane GWS thoughts and kind of combine them together and say, based on what I saw from those two teams, straight sets could be on the cards for Brisbane. Okay, I think it's very real possibility. Interesting. Um, is that? I mean, we'll, well, I guess we'll touch a little bit more on that later. But um, do you think it was just because GWS is so? Experienced, or you know, I think they're just coming red hot at the right time. Bit of yeah, a bit of combination of G Dub's experience, knowing what they're doing, the talent, and Brisbane didn't look that good in that Richmond game. I don't think they didn't. Um, I guess we'll, we'll, not we'll, to talk go into that too much. Yeah, that's yeah. all right. We'll talk about Brisbane Richmond in a little yeah. bit. Um, but yeah, no, GWS really came out with a quite a physical game style. Mm. Um, unfortunately, you see Delidio did his calf again. Uh, I think it was his calf. And he basically played the whole game injured and then retired at the end. Yeah. Uh, that was quite sad. Oh, oh to- Toby Green. I didn't see it, to be honest. The oh, you haven't seen the footage? I haven't seen the incident. If you watch it, I'll try and describe it. Basically, the, someone gets tackled. I think Bont originally gets tackled to the ground. No, Bont tackles someone else. The ball yeah. spills loose. And there's a mass, massive sort of like scrum on the ground. Yeah. And Bont's not got the ball he's like a meter mm. away from the ball and toby green jumps on him and starts pulling his hair and like appears to gouge his eyes now i believe that the statement to the tribunal was like no one actually made the accusation accusation of eye gouging oh, yeah. so i wonder if either that's not quite what happened or bont decided not to throw him under the bus um either way you can clearly say he, see he pulls bont's hair yeah. and it was it looked like a bit of a dog act to me now what's mysterious to me is how you can Determine somebody's done enough of a, um, or if it, it warrants serious misconduct, enough to war- to warrant a fine of seven and a half grand, mm. but there's no game suspension. Yeah. Seven and a half grand is a very hefty fine. Yeah, that's definitely on the top end of the scale for AFL fining. And I, th- I feel like they're setting a dangerous precedent here where they're not going to suspend anyone during finals mm. because it's becoming a real trend now. Yeah, they'd try and avoid it if possible, that's for sure. I do wonder if mid-season Nat Nui would have got done for, well, for, for throwing. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, don't, I would have said no. Would have increased the chances, though. If it was, mid- if it was mid-season, I could see them doing it. Uh, we saw Trent yeah. Cotchen escape suspension a few years ago for a high bump, wasn't it? Uh, or a head clap. Something know, like it was that, something yeah. like that that in the rules definitely should have gone, but it was a prelim, so they didn't let yeah. him. And I think it was one of those rules that they sort of slightly interpret different every year, the one mm. he'd broken. 
can't yeah. remember the exact one. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. It's one of those rules where they change their mind on it every bloody year. That's right. So with Toby Green getting a mere fine, I feel like they're heading towards a territory now where they're setting a dangerous precedent where you can get away with a little bit more in finals. But it's one of those ones you won't be able to take the piss though sort of thing. I don't think if you no, took the piss with it, they'd have to suspend you. Yeah, that's right. Well, I, I think I feel like you'll find people arguing that Toby Green took the piss a bit with this action. Mm. But anyway, not to labour on it too much. Um, from a Bulldogs' perspective, how do you think they would reflect on this game and this season as a whole? Well, season, they'd probably be happy they made finals again considering their past two years after winning the flag. So they'd be happy to be back in September. Mm. So they'd probably take that as a positive step towards getting back to where they were 2016, if not surpassing because they were only really young then. They'd mm. probably want to build into something a bit more consistent and at the top of the mound for a few years rather than a one-off. Yeah, I agree. I think on the whole they'll be pleased. This game wasn't a great one for them. The Giants obviously targeted Bond. I think they tagged him to 12 possessions off the top of my head. Um, they had a real quiet one, I know that. It was the worst ever contested possession differential under beverage for the Bulldogs. Shit. So they just got mauled Yeah, All in right. that stat uh. specifically. Nonetheless, I think... Bulldogs fans can rest easy. This was a satisfactory... Well, I would say it was a, a pleasing year for them. I would go as far as... Hey, uh, what are they? Were they close to bottom four last year? I think so, yeah. yeah. I think they might have been... F- yeah, bottom four. Maybe just out of the bottom four, actually. I think. Potentially, potentially. Like, yeah, for sixth last. Yeah. Um, actually, they were 14th, I'm pretty sure. I think they were posi below Freo yeah, last okay. season. They were 14th. Yeah. Um, well, anyway. Yeah, I, I would just say that they should be really pleased and I think it's onwards and upwards for them going forward definitely especially now that they've gotten back there they'll probably help them in terms of free agency and trade recruitment Norton is facing a lengthy time on the on the sideline though did you see his knee injury no so um, yeah he's done his knee but they it's unclear whether it's an ACL or a I think they said it was his medial ligament right. but nonetheless it's still up to six to twelve months yeah, injury they suspect so I don't think we've got anything out officially yet but yeah that's a huge blow for them going That's forward. That's huge. Um, now we'll move quickly on to the Lions and the Tigers for the, was the last final. Um, what were your general thoughts on that game on Saturday night? Not Brisbane's finest. They were very inaccurate. Couldn't convert. They were sort of in it for patches, but Richmond, when they had control, really controlled it. And yeah. Optimised every opportunity they could. Yes. They did. I think the Lions did enjoy a pretty good first half, or at least yeah. a good quarter and a half. Um, I, I like people are really talking up their first quarter and a half. I think they really they got the jump on the Tigers. The Tigers were a bit slow to start. It was quite similar to West Coast and Richmond earlier this year, the one we live streamed in yeah. round twenty two, yeah. where the Eagles got the jump and then Richmond sort of clawed it back. But Brisbane butchered some really gettable opportunities. Mm. I'm thinking Cam Rayner. I think Barry and Christensen, um, even Charlie Cameron was missing yeah. shots he would normally nail. And I do wonder if that's big stage pressure. Cameron's played in the grand final, but yeah. yes, he has. Um, so I don't know what it was. But, I, yeah, I do wonder. I do think Richmond would have won either way, but I do wonder if Brisbane had nailed some of those early chances. It would they have been would have a bit been of a, able to hold their ground a bit better. Yeah, and instead they got mauled, really. Mm. Um, shame to see Mitch Robinson... Did a hammy as well? Yeah. I'm ho- I don't think he'll play this week, but I'm hoping we don't see... I mean, we see more of him this year because I watch his podcast. He's been really passionate about the Lions' journey this year. It's been really interesting, and I was a bit gutted when I saw him go down. Yeah, I've been. I've always been a big Mitch Robinson guy for years. When people shit on him saying, yeah, this guy's a bloody idiot, uh, I was like, yeah. no, he goes out there, does his bloody job, he goes hard. He's, he seems like a cool dude, actually. Yeah. I always thought he was I, a bit of a the cut of his jib. Yeah, no, I think he's got a good personality. He's... um. He's a bit rough around the edges, but he's, he's likeable. Do you watch no, his show? I haven't had a chance to really catch too much of it yet. Should check it yeah. out. It's actually quality. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the Lions had more shots on goal and yet lost by like 40, 50 points yeah. off the top of my head. Um, they had more contested possessions and more one more ground balls. But I don't know how much that really counts for because I think they're a good contested possession side um, and Richmond have never really been off the top of my head. Mm. I'm pretty sure Richmond ranked pretty low for stuff like um, contested ball, uh, contested possessions. So at the end of the day, it counts for stuff all that they got torn up in contested thing possessions. Is, one thing with that game, I will say actually, is every time Brisbane turned it over at the forward 50 line, Richmond were out so quick. Yep. And they, Richmond's rebound was ferocious. 
they play a very slingshot style. Yeah. They they were, they were dominant, and um, Dusty Martin got on the end of a few. A little yeah. bit of help from the umpires. How was that little throw that he did to yeah. Rewalt? That was pretty shocking. The game was over by then. Yeah. Um, the Tigers look scary. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I want so badly for Collingwood to beat them in the grand final, but <laughs> when I see Dugoito down and I see Richmond just tear up a side of the Gabba and then historically not good travellers... Uh. They, they look destined to win the flag at this stage. Mm. Is that your assessment? You tipped I, them I did finals. pick them to win it yeah. going in, so I'm not going to deviate from that at this point. Yeah. They are a great side, as much as it pains me. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. So now it is time for us to have a look at this, this week's week. games. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll start off with Geelong West Coast. Um, a game in, another game we hope to live stream, potentially with a guest this time, a friend of ours who goes for Geelong. A very successful actual footballer yeah, he's compared good, to us, at least. Yeah, he's a very good footballer. Um, it's Elliot Yo. No, um, <laughs> it is a friend of ours. <laughs> Why was I going to build that up? Um, Geelong and West Coast, are you surprised at all that um, the Eagles are starting favourites? Eagles are the favourites? Yeah, actually, I had the same reaction. But um, Really? Yep. Shit. Yeah. I can sort of say it, but because Richmond... Oh, sorry, Geelong can be a bit... But to disrespect them after finishing top of the ladder when you'd say they still have more of a home field advantage at the MCG than Eagles do, mm. it's a bit rough on Geelong. Yeah, I think Geelong are 4-2 and two at the MCG this yeah. year to begin with. Yeah, I was surprised too because I don't think I've ever seen the Eagles start as favourites at the MCG against a finals quality side. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that in, in like yeah. the last Especially five. Especially in more. finals. Yeah, exactly. Do you think... Well... I know you kind of already answered this, but do you think the media and AFL community have jumped off Geelong a bit too quickly? Possible. Like, don't get me wrong, it's a very winnable game for the Eagles, but at the same time, mm. Geelong's top of the ladder for a reason. They've got a lot of great players, especially if they go a more traditional ruck setup and move Blitzhoffs back, as we alluded to earlier. Mm. A few adjustments, they're right in it, I feel. I agree. I... The Eagles are pretty strong at the MCG too. That's the other thing. So it's almost it's almost a neutral ground. Mm. And so it really comes down to who's going to be better on the day. GMHBA is quite different dimensionally to to the MCG, whereas the Eagles play at Optus, which is very similar. Whether that's actually going to play in the Eagles' hands, it's unclear. Head-to-head, head, the last time they played, they did play at GMH, GMHBA and the, the Cats annihilated West Coast. Yeah. So I think as, an, as a fan, I've still got that kind of scarred into me. That, that memory of them butchering us up. But I do think we are a bit of a different team now than we were. Um, so at least you're in Melbourne for the rest of your run with the Richmond Brizzy result. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, Mitch Duncan, an important out for the Cats. I haven't actually read whether he's definitely out, but he had a knee brace on after the game. Yeah, he didn't look good. I'd be surprised after his seven-day break, he'd be back into the side which is a blow for the Cats. He's been one of their most... Well, it's hard to say whether they're mo- one of the most important because you could rattle off a bunch of stars this year. They've really got a lot of names you could put in that category, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, so, but I mean, I think he's had a career best year as that kind of high half-forward um, goal-kicking option. Yeah. And, yeah, to, to lose him is a bit of a blow, especially against an Eagles back line that is pretty strong. You know, if the Cats do lose this, they'd be, the, I believe, one of the... I think the first side to go straight sets from first. I haven't actually double checked right. that, so I might get outed in the comments. But um, that would be very interesting. Who are you thinking? Oof, this is a tough one, really. Geelong did look a bit uninspiring the other day, but yeah, I can't see them going out in straight sets. I don't think so. I'd give it to them, Charles. Yeah, that does not surprise me at all. That you could be against West Coast. You do it. have a track record of this. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, look. Oh, can I just touch on as well? Dangerfield was brilliant against mm. the Pies. He's, I think he's having one of his best. I wouldn't say his best season. He was good in sixteen and seventeen, but I think he's a good chance for the Brownlow this year. He's going to be a big danger man for the Eagles. I don't think. I don't think Yo historically has a good record against Danger. I could be wrong. I know he's shut down Dusty. I know he's shut down Fife, but Danger's a bit of a different beast athletically. Would it be more of a Hutchings go to him maybe? No, I, wouldn't, Neo, I wouldn't have thought so. I don't think Hutchings is capable. Uh, Hutchings is five centimetres shorter and, yeah, a few kilos uh, lighter. And Yo would be quicker as well. Uh, 
Yeah, Yo's definitely a bit more athletic than Hutchings, to say the least. Yeah. Look, I'm going to back in my boys. I'm going to say the Eagles win this. If if there, it, it really depends which side plays on their terms. Mm. If Geelong are able to slow the ball down and control it. Um, and also, you know, it's a very contested style game. I would back Geelong in. West Coast are historically not a good uh, contested ball side. So if the ball's sort of played aerially and the Eagles are allowed to use the ball, the width of the field and play very outside uncontested style, then I think they could cut the cats up. They definitely have the potential to beat them, that's for sure. Yeah. Like, I'm not shitting on them in any sense. Like, Did you give a margin? What margin are you thinking? Goal or two. Yeah, okay. Close. I could see either team winning by a lot. Mm. When I say a lot, I mean 20 plus. Um, so comfortable. Yeah, that's sort of my thing. I'm cover mask because it could go away, so I'm sort of saying it'll be close. But Yeah, I feel like if one... It depends who plays on their own terms, and if either side plays on yeah. their own terms, I could see it being a belt. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, it has that potential. Plus. Definitely has that potential. Yeah. Look, I'll tip my Eagles by 17. Yeah. Just got to be a can't show a little bit of it. Got to back them in. It is can't finals. argue with it. Yeah. Definitely can't. Um, all right, so we'll move on quickly to the second semi final. And this one is actually a real mouth watering battle. I, I, I've mm. toed and froed about who to tip here. We're, of course, talking about the Brisbane Lions and the Giants. Last time they met, the Lions actually upset the Giants in round 16 in Sydney. The Giants had a few injury woes, though. I think Kelly and Cornelia got injured that game, and the Lions ended up winning by 20 points. From memory, Lockie Neal tore him up. Another really good player from Brisbane and Richmond last week. Two goals and 37 possessions. The Giants are a much better side, I think, than they were in round 16. I think, as we just elaborated on, um, they're looking pretty... Ominous. So, yeah, what are, you, what are you thinking about this game? I did hint earlier that I thought Brizzy could go in straight sets, and I guess I'll go out, put it out there. I'll, I'll pick GWS. I think they can do it. Interesting. This They've is... got the tools to do it. They've got more talent in different positions around the ground than Brisbane does. Brisbane have their talent, but Cam- Cameron... GWS's is all over the ground. Cameron and Finn Lason are pretty good one-two punch up forward. Yeah. The midfield's strong. I, I, think, I believe Canilio will be available too. Really? Well, I haven't actually seen that confirmed, but I'm pretty sure he's on the injury list as one week. Oh, yeah, I had remembered. Yeah, you're right. I did remember hearing Yeah, one week. So if he comes in, that only bolsters them. As I said before, they're the only team to win a final every year since 16, so they are battle-hardened coming up against the least finals experience side, maybe? The definitely. Lions probably. Well, I'm thinking the only one was Essendon. But yeah, I'd say the Lions have played less. The Lions definitely have. Yeah, you'd have to think Because so. Essendon still have older dudes that have played finals with other teams and... Yeah, so the Lions have like Hodge and um, Christensen and Robinson off the top Robinson of Robinson wouldn't have played much finals, though. Yeah, a Carlton. couple with Carlton. Uh, 2011, 2012, probably. Mm. I don't know. But no, they didn't I think go he would have played too deep in finals, though, sort of thing. He would have played like one or two a year, maybe, with, yeah, I guess. for a couple of years at Carlton. Yeah. Hodge's probably got more than whole teams. Yeah, he would, 100%. Yeah. Uh, Christensen probably would have had a few from that Geelong stretch as well. But. We digress. Um, yeah, as I said, Robbo getting injured sucks, I think. Uh, I don't know whether that's actually going to affect the team as much as it just is I, a bit of a I shame. think it does because he's just a guy that tackles and he always, he's not afraid to just chuck it on the boot and gain metres. Mm. Oh, yeah, I think he's a good quality yeah. player. I think he was in the frame. Did he make the All-Australian 40? I'm not sure, to be honest. I can't remember either. He was certainly in the frame for it. Uh uh, and I think he was rated the second most courageous player in the league this year. So after yeah, doing he's crimes. definitely in the courageous conversation, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Almost borderline crazy. <laughs> um, who do you think is better on paper between these two teams? GWS. Yeah? On talent. Yeah, okay. They're a lot better. Yeah, okay. I, I guess you could argue that. On proven form this year, the Lions have been better. Though. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, was that Zorko's first final? I think it was, hey. Probably, yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't think he played very well. I don't think he handled the, the pressure. It was almost like he tried to do a little bit too much. Uh, uh, McCluggage didn't look too bad from what I saw. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's definitely a lot of young talent at the Lions. Uh, so, yeah. So you think the Giants buy how much? I'll say three goals, 18, 20. That would be a huge result. I think um, it's, I'm trying to avoid the recency bias. Gino G- Buffs played really well last week. The Lions played really shit. They come together at Lions ga- at the Lions' home ground. It's tempting to just go, oh, with the form line, the Giants are going to win. I am going to go with the Lions. I think the Lions are going to win by eight points. Yeah. I'm ticking this. If Lions win, it's by the skin of their teeth. Yeah, 
but it's definitely possible. That's right. So you're tipping the Cats and the Giants, and I'm tipping the Eagles and the Lions. So um, Another finals-related podcast where we've pretty much gone entirely differently. Yeah, that's true. We've only there's, Out of six finals, we've only agreed on one tip so far, yeah. and that was West Coast Essendon. Yeah. Interesting. We're spreading our catering to the audience. Yeah, amongst other things. Um, <laughs> anyway, just to finish up as well, um, they're talking about immortalising Danny Frawley's um, award on his show, The Golden Fist. Yeah. And they're thinking about awarding it at the Brownlow Medal Night f- going forward. What's the... Are they? I think Best Defender. Best Defender, okay. Yeah. Who do you think would get it if they awarded it? This? Best Defender this year. Ooh. So the All-Australian back yeah, three... Yeah, that's could, um, I guess it doesn't have to be a key defender now, I think about it. Mm. You, could, you could argue... Um, so McGovern... Grimes, Andrews, Blitzarves would be the four key backs. Yeah. Darcy Moore would probably be a shout. Um, Shannon Hearn comes to mind as an actual yeah, defender. Yeah, Hearn was one of the guys I was contemplating there. Basha Hooley, not really his sort of style. I would yeah. probably go with Grimes. Grimes was a fourth mate. I didn't, I'd, Hearn even, I'd probably yeah. close to give him a shout. Sure, yeah. Interesting. McGov, even though he's had a down year compared to his usualness, he's still McGov. Yeah, I would, I'd be inclined to say between Grimes and McGovern personally. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I think we'll finish up. That was a pretty short podcast today by our usual standards. I'm really looking forward to this week of footy. I think if the Eagles win this week, I will start to get excited. I haven't You'll stop wearing black. You'll be no longer in a state of mourning. Yeah. <laughs> I, I nearly wore my Eagles scarf today, but I, I forgot it. And you it's really quite, hot. You're not quite proud enough of them to wear it until, <laughs> until they win on the weekend. I'm very proud of my boys. I'm very proud of my boys. Oh, that is recording, thank God. Just, <laughs> I just had a moment of panic where I looked at the second camera and it wasn't recording. At least it's on you. Yeah. Yeah, cool. The people are used to not saying mate, this, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, channel's never been better. No, <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, thank you so much for listening to True Footy Podcast. Um, If you follow us on YouTube or subscribe to us on YouTube, brother, we will be back for a live stream for Geelong and West Coast this Friday night. So make sure you join in. And this time, we will do better with the internet connection. We have no control over that. That is a false promise. Thanks very much. See you next time. Anytime.